Great. Thank you. Dr. Harrison? Okay. Well, I'm a physical therapist, and my doctoral work was in gerontology, and I teach at UK in rehab sciences, so it kind of makes sense that a lot of my focus throughout the last many years uh, has been on aging and function. So that's a big focus that I've had, and I do go to UK. I drive to Lexington to do my work. I have worked at Sandsbury and been the physical therapist down at that's the, that's the long-term care facility at St. Catharines. Um, so I've spent quite a bit of time in that area. I live in the north end of the county here um, on the same road as Horseshoe Bend Winery. Let's put a plug in for the winery. Um, and I love living here. And what I really hope is that in a couple of years I'll be working part-time in Lexington and, and spending the rest of my time here. Um, I'd kind of like to keep my remarks then focused around two different topics. One is related to disability, since I'm a rehab therapist, uh, and disability among older adults, since my doctor works in gerontology. And then I also want to talk a little bit about health promotion. We're doing a grant right now uh, that's funded through NIH, where we're actually going out and interviewing people who have had stroke who live in rural Kentucky and interviewing people who have had spinal cord injury and interviewing people who have had brain injury who live in rural Kentucky. And we're also interviewing caregivers of those folks. So it's a, it's a study where we're really figuring out what's the lived experiences of, in my case my focus is on stroke, but what's the lived experiences of people with stroke and their caregivers who live in rural Kentucky. And so I want to talk a little bit about that process and what we've learned from that. Um, before I get to that, I want to say a few things about aging in general, and I think the things that you all probably already know, and of course what I tell my students is when I'm talking about aging, I'm always talking about a little bit older than me, but actually I've, in the last couple of years I've started sort of owning that I'm in that domain too. But one thing about the aging population is that as we get older we have more more pathologies, more illnesses, more multiple comorbidities as they call it in the medical world and we are more really much more vulnerable to disability and when you think about disability it's really uh, it's really when there are barriers to your ability to participate whether it be participating out in the farm whether it be participating down on Main Street in Springfield um, so this idea of having multiple pathologies that interact to cause disability is something we see a lot in the older population. And complete recovery from these kind of problems is probably not realistic. We're not going to uh, erase diabetes and arthritis and cancer and heart disease and lung disease, for example. But we can do a much better job at managing the problems that we're seeing, uh, especially older adults having. Now I'm talking about older adults, but I would like to, to mention, to, to kind of harken back to what Jonas was saying, which is that you know, what we experience as older adults is not something we acquired as older adults. We started acquiring those things when we were much younger, so I really feel like aging is not something that happens when we're old, it's something that starts when we're young. And what we're learning through the work that we're doing with interviewing older adults with stroke and the, and the people who are helping them uh, is that there's really the kind of three main components to health in, in our general society. Of course, at the center is the person and the family or the caregivers for that person. But you have the community and the healthcare systems kind of surrounding, circling those, that inner sanctum of the, the person and their family. And it's really not, you can't really say what should healthcare do to create a sustainable, or what should the community do to create a sustainable. Uh, lifestyle in Washington County. To me it's really how do the three of those get better integrated so that we can be a healthier community as a whole? How does healthcare integrate and collaborate with people? How does healthcare integrate and collaborate with the community so that we can all move forward in a more positive way? And to me that's kind of the essence of what we have to do in order to to move our communities forward. Um, one thing that I think needs to happen is that we need to, as a society, become more empowered. The community needs to become more empowered to actually help take care of each other. So that when we see that someone is uh, suffering from multiple problems at home and disability and can't get out, that we actually take responsibility for connecting with those people and become 
a connector between the person and the community. And so healthcare's role, I think, is to, as much as possible, uh, try to collaborate with people and communities in order to try to increase the person's interaction in the community to some degree, which then helps with quality of life. I'm thinking about, you know, I know this is kind of, these are abstract concepts, but I want to give you the, an example of one guy that I interviewed, so I think it kind of drives the point home, and we'll call him Chuck, but Chuck was a 68-year-old guy, lived in a very rural area, he'd had a stroke, and he didn't recognize the symptoms of the stroke when he was having the stroke, he's retired, um, so he went a couple of days of progressive weakness before he and his wife realized that something was going on, and they... Um, ultimately called 911 and he went to his rural community hospital. The weather was terrible. They couldn't get the helicopter in so he waited another day to get helicoptered over to UK. So he was two or three days out from his stroke by the time he got to acute care which resulted of course in an expand the stroke being worse than it had to be at the time. Um, but he got great acute care. He got great rehab after acute care. He went to Cardinal Hill um, and he got really good rehabilitation there and then and his wife got a lot of education he got a lot of education then he went back home he had all the equipment he needed when he went back home well he didn't go back home first he went to his daughter's home first so when he got to his daughter's home which by the way he built about 25 years ago when he got to his and he's telling me the story he got to my daughter's home and guess what my hallways were too narrow for my wheelchair and he, he built it, so he really was sort of complaining about not understanding that when he built the house. Um, he stayed there for a couple of weeks. They got by. Everybody was exhausted. And then he went back to his home with his wife, and they lived in a double wide, where the hallways were too narrow for his wheelchair. So in the meantime, the community had rallied around and, and built ramps for him to get into his home. He had all the equipment he needed. You know, Medicare covered a lot of the things that he needed. So in the acute phases, he had a lot of great support once he got into the acute care setting. And the medical arena and the rehab people were great. But at exactly the time when he really needed the most support to integrate back into the community, everything went away. So he's back home, no one, or I really should say this, according to what he was telling me, um, people are afraid to come visit him. His old buddies, he's got some communication problems, his old buddies are afraid to, they don't know how to communicate. What they used to do is hang out, watch the ball games, and ride ATVs. That was their favorite thing to do in their leisure time. He can't do that anymore. Uh, so his friends are afraid of him. His brother doesn't like to see him the way he is, so his brother stopped coming by. His church community came by, or his pastor came by a few times in the first month. Then that kind of dwindled. Of course, the minister is only one person. Um, and he lives down a holler in the back roads in a double wide with his wife. She is exhausted. I saw her. Uh, the daughter whom I met, she is exhausted and angry at her siblings for not helping out. Now I'm just using Chuck as an example because I think it really drives home the point of how we do, I think in the medical world and in healthcare, we do a pretty good job with acute care and treating disease. But we don't do a very good job with people's actual lived experience, especially when there's a disability involved. So I'd kind of like to make, the point I would like to make is really related to trying to get people more involved with their neighbors and getting the faith communities more involved and finding really lay people, people in the community who can be navigators and help people connect to their communities uh, better. And I think healthcare plays a role, but healthcare is a collaborator, not an imposer of a particular way of being in the in our society. Um, I also want to make um, kind of a, make a little point about health promotion. So, for people who maybe aren't experiencing disability, or for people who are, I think that we could do a better job of coming together in our very local areas and actually starting physical activity programs and nutrition educational programs. I think what's happening here is part of that, which is really awesome. Um, I'm thinking about on our road on Lawson Lane, you know, for a while we had an exercise program where everybody just kind of got together once a week and we exercised and then people hopefully were exercising in between. But I think that 
it really requires healthcare people, community leaders, and individuals in the community coming together to really start kind of a PR campaign mm -hmm. for physical activity and eating better and healthy living. But I really think that in order for all this to happen, it has to happen at the local level mm -hmm. rather than um, at the state level or traveling to the urban areas to get our medical care. I'm a big believer in that. And I know that UK doesn't wa actually want to get the simple cases, what they call simple stroke cases. They want the complex patients. They want the simple cases. We, none of us would say it was simple to have a stroke, but they want the less complicated cases for people who are having problems to stay in their local communities. So I think, again, understanding what our resources are here would go, go a long way toward helping people really utilize the resources that are here. So I, those are the two big points I wanted to make is having us, I think, in our community take more responsibility for our neighbors and for individuals who are disabled and connecting them to the community participate, to participate and then also taking responsibility for being leaders and organizing uh, to create a healthier lifestyle at our local level.